Hello and welcome to today's math lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera. Hello. hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart centre, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready, guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Excellent. Next, we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we can begin by stretching up high to the sky. High as we can. And then, let's go down low. Touch our toes. Back up high one more time. This time, can we go tippy toe high? And while we're there, let's have a wave side to side. Excellent, guys. And then back down to touch your toes once more. Let's stand up, have a shake. Arms and legs, shake it out. Shake it out. Now we can do some rotations. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Excellent, guys. Now we'll do some stretches. Let's do five to our right. One, two, three, four, five. And then five to our left. One, two, three. Four, five. Excellent, guys. And now let's take our right hand and find our left foot. And then we'll take our left hand and find our right foot.
right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. And one more time, guys. Let's have a shake. Arms and legs, shake it out. And to finish, we will do five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant, guys. Have a seat. So welcome to today's math lesson. And who can remember what we began learning about in the previous math lesson? What type of charts? Bar charts. Remember, we learned about different types of charts. But the one that we concentrated on were bar charts. So let's write that word on the board first. Bar, B, A, R. And charts, H, A, R, T, S. So all together, guys, bar charts. And in our previous lesson, our students learned how to read bar charts correctly to answer questions by getting the information that they need. So as a recap to the previous lesson, I'm going to create a bar chart on the board. And then, with the information that I present, I will ask questions for some of my students to answer. So remember, each bar chart needs a series of different pieces of information. The first thing it needs, title. Okay, so the first thing our bar chart always needs is a title. And the title of my bar chart will be Colours of Cars. Okay, so I'm going to do a bar chart about the colours of cars. Now who can remember, what is the name of the line that goes up on the bar chart? Vertical axes. Vertical axes. The vertical line is the vertical axes. Now what we need for our vertical axes is it needs a scale. And this time it won't be about people because we're looking at cars. So we're going to have a scale. Number of cars is correct. And then this is the title. And for our scale, what will be the bottom of our scale? Always start with zero. And then we'll go two, four, six, eight, ten. And we know that everything in between is half of that. So for example, here will be one, here will be three. Okay, so we're doing well so far, guys. We've got our title, our vertical axes, vertical axes label, and vertical axes scale. But what's next? What type of axes? We need our horizontal axes. Okay. Now our bar chart is colours of cars. If the, horizon, if the vertical axis is about cars, our horizontal axis will be colours. Okay, so who can give me some different colours for our categories? Okay, blue and red. <laughs> so we've got blue. Let's get five different colours. Red. White, yellow. And orange, okay. So no problem, all I need to do is to make my horizontal axes a little bit bigger. So now we've got the outline of our bar chart. What we need to do now is to present the information. So let's see, I will give some different columns for the bars and then I will ask my students if they can read the bar chart correctly. So.
Okay, so now we've got how many different bars? Five. How many different categories for the colors? Five. Okay, so Pat, can you tell me, let's see, how many blue cars were there? We're looking for blue cars. Yes, so what you need to do is you need to go to the horizontal axis, find the color blue, and then take the blue color bar up until the number six, okay? Down, how many red cars? Now be careful with red because we're going up in stages of two. How many red cars? Three, yes, well done. Because notice how the red is in between here. So if we have a graph with the vertical axis scale goes up in twos, anything here would be three. Here would be five. Here would be seven. So we can still read the numbers correctly even if it goes up in twos. Prow, how many white cars can you see? Four for white. Nadia, how many yellow cars? Two yellow. And Pangpon, how many orange? So let's find orange. Orange is here. Now take the orange bar to the top. How many? Seven. Seven, yes. You can see here that the orange bar goes up along to seven in between six and eight. So now, because we've got the different amounts of information, six for blue, how many for red? How many for white? How many for yellow? How many for orange? How many cars in total, guys? 22. Okay, six plus three? Plus four? Plus two? Plus seven equals 22. So you see how by looking at the information correctly, we not only know how many different colors cars there were, we also know how many cars there are in total. And that is how we read bar charts correctly. Guys, that was brilliant. Very well done. And what we're doing in today's lesson is we're staying with bar charts, but what we want our students to do today is to create their own bar charts by using the information they are given to design a bar chart similar to the ones we've been doing on the board. And what we've got now is a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe, listen to, and also practice speaking about drawing bar charts correctly. So let's all turn to have a look at the TV screen, please, guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation today, drawing bar charts. Yes, and here in the picture, you can see an example of a bar chart. How many different bars, guys? Six. Six, yes. We can see here that this bar chart has six different bars. So that means there are six different categories or different pieces of information. Because each bar on a chart represents one piece of information. Bar charts are charts that use bars to represent data. And you can see here how all of the different bars are represented with different colors. So today, when you get to do your own bar chart, it's a good idea to use different colors on your worksheets. This makes the information clearer to see. Bar charts can also be referred to as bar graphs. So like we said in the previous lesson, don't be confused by bar charts and bar graphs. They're both the same thing. All bar charts have various pieces of important information. So take note, because coming up is an exercise where you're going to create your own bar chart. 
Number one, title of the bar chart. Yes, every bar chart needs its own title so that we know what the bar chart is about. Number two, vertical axes, which is this line here, going from the bottom to the top. Going up means vertical. And the vertical axis needs vertical axis label. Yes, so that we know what type of information we're counting. So we can see the label on this vertical axis is number of people. So we know we're counting people. For example, four people own rabbits. Because we look at the horizontal axis for rabbits and count the number of people. So in order to be able to count, we need vertical axis scale. Yes, the numbers. Otherwise, we won't have anything to count. The scale always starts at zero and can go up in different segments, either from one, two, three, or for larger numbers in twos or fives, or even tens. And then, after the vertical axes, we need horizontal axes, which is the line that goes across from left to right. And so that we know what type of information we're counting in the horizontal axes, we need horizontal axes label. Yes. And because we know the title of our bar chart here, what kinds of pets do you own? We know that we're talking about different pets. Rabbit, dog, cat, goldfish, and hamster. They're the labels on the horizontal axes. So, here we have a bar chart. Who can tell me what is the title of the bar chart? Fruit sales. Okay, so we're looking at the amounts of fruits that have been sold. Here we have our, horizontal, our vertical axes. The label is sales. Now look at how the scale, what's the bottom number on the scale? Zero. Zero. But then we're talking quite large numbers. So the scale goes up every 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Yes, and because we know the title of our bar chart is about fruit, therefore the categories on the horizontal axes are the different types of fruit. What is the red bar? Apples. Yellow bar? Bananas, purple bar, grapes, orange bar, oranges. So orange is the colour, orange is the fruit. And the green bar, pears. Okay, so who can tell me how many apples were sold? 40. Yes, you see, we go to the apples, go all the way up to the top of the bar, and then see what the total is. 40. How many, now be careful, because look closely, how many bananas were sold? Not, maybe 59 or 58, yes. The important thing to notice, it's just under 60. So 58 or 59. How about grapes? 30. Oranges? 50. And pears. Maybe 28. Yes, just under 30 again. When you're using your worksheets, it's a good idea to use a ruler. And you can use a ruler to line across so you can get the exact number. But here, we're only demonstrating. And that is how we read and draw our own bar charts. Any questions, guys? That was excellent. Well done. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation about bar charts. 
And coming up, we've got an exercise for our students to practice creating their own bar charts by drawing one on the whiteboard together. But before then, guys, it's time for our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And for this sequence, we can have a game of teacher says. So listen carefully. If teacher says, we can do. If teacher doesn't say, don't do. Okay? So hands on head. Teacher says, hands on hips. Hands on shoulders. Teacher says, touch your knees. Teacher says, wiggle your knees. Stop. Teacher says, stand up straight. Teacher says, turn around. Teacher says, hands on shoulders. Teacher says, hands by your sides. Back the other way. Excellent, guys. Well, listen, teacher says jogging on the spot. Teacher says arms in the air. Teacher says forwards and backwards. Teacher says side to side. Teacher says stop. Teacher says arms by your sides. Teacher says down into a ball. Five, four, three, two, one. Teacher says jump. Excellent guys. And teacher says please sit down. And teacher says, we're now going to do a class demonstration of how to read and draw our bar charts correctly. So remember guys, every bar chart needs at least six pieces of information. Ready? Title. Title. Vertical axes. Vertical axes label. Vertical axes label. Vertical axes scale. Vertical axes scale. Horizontal axes and horizontal axes label. Yes, and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give my students the job of drawing their own bar chart on the whiteboard. So what we're going to do, we're going to do it in order. The first thing we need to do is we need a title. So the student who can come forward and draw or write the title of our bar chart is Dan. So Dan, come and join me at the front of class, please. So Dan also gets the honour of creating our bar chart. Dan, what will our bar chart be about? Favourite animals. Okay, well that's going to be the title of our bar chart. F A V O R I T E. Favourite. And animals, A, N, I, M, A, L, S. Brilliant, Dan. And as always, the title goes at the top. So let's say together, favourite animals. Okay, we're off and running. Our bar chart has its title. Dan, that was brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Dan, please, guys. So that's step one to creating our bar chart. We have a title. But who can remember what step number two was? And let's see who can come forward and create step number two. Bang pong. What's the next thing that we need on our bar chart? What do we call the line that goes from the bottom to the top? Any rem anyone remember? Axis. Vertical axes. So, bang pong, can we have a line that starts about here and then goes to here? Or you can do it going down. Excellent. Okay, so we've got a vertical line on our bar chart. 
but as it's referred to, is a vertical axis. All together, guys. Vertical axis. Vertical axis. Excellent, Pang Pon. Very well done. So Pang Pon has created a vertical axis. Big round of applause. <laughs> Who can remember? Now that we have our vertical axes, what do we need next? Our vertical axes need some more things. Our vertical axes needs a label. So let's see who can come forward and create our vertical axes label. That gal. Come and join me at the front of class. So now that gal can demonstrate how to do a vertical axes label. So what is our bar chart about, guys? Animals. So the vertical axes label will be number of animals. N, U, M, P, E, R. Number of, O, F. And animals, M, A, L, S. Excellent, Lackau. Remember, when it comes to the vertical axes, we're always looking at numbers. So the vertical axes will always be concerned with numbers. And in this case, number of animals. So Lakgao, that was excellent. Big round of applause for Lakgao, please, guys. Okay, now we're nearly finished on the vertical axes. But if we're talking about numbers, what does a vertical axis also need? Sk -sk Scale. Yes, we need to know what numbers we're talking about. So, Pak Bung, can you come forward and give our vertical axes a scale? And can we go from 0 to 10? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Excellent, Pak Bung. So, you see, Pak Bung has designed our scale going from 0 and going up in 2s. So what that means, we already know that anything in between one, three, how about here? Between five, seven, nine. Okay, so Pak Bung has correctly demonstrated how to create our vertical axis scale. Pak Bung, that was brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Pak Bung, please, guys. So that's the vertical axis finished. But now we need the next line going across. Who can remember what we call the next line going across? It's an axis, but what type? Horizontal axis. So Net, can you demonstrate how to draw a horizontal axis, which is basically a horizontal line going across the bottom of the graph or chart? Do it to about here for me. Excellent. So you see now, Net has demonstrated a horizontal line which represents our horizontal axes. Net, very well done. Big round of applause for Net, please, guys. Okay, we're nearly ready to put in our information. But what we need now is our horizontal <coughs> axis needs its label. If the vertical axis is about numbers, what is the horizontal axis going to be about? Animals. It's always about the title of our chart or graph. So now I would like Nadia to come forward and write up some different animals for us. So Nadia, here's your pen. Let's see, can we have four different categories? Who can give Nadia some examples of animals that we can use, guys? Cat, okay. So the first column, cat. C, A, T. Dog. Dog, okay. D, O, G. Anything else? Fish. Fish. Think about animals we might have at home. And then birds, we'll have another category. 
V I R D. Excellent. So now we've got our horizontal axes and we've got our horizontal axes label. Cat, Cat. Dog. dog, fish, fish. Earth. earth. So when it comes to finding out our favorite animals, there are four to choose from. Nadia, that was brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Nadia, please, guys. Okay, so now we need four different bars here. So now I need four more students to come forward and demonstrate how to draw the bars. So let's see, Pat, can Pat bring forward the blue marker and can we have how many cats for our favorite animals? How many cats shall we have, guys? 10, right to the top, or should we have somewhere in between? Nine. Can we have nine for favorite cats, please, Pat? So can we have the cat bar up to nine? And then across. That's brilliant. You see, what Pat's done is he has took the cat category and he took the bar all the way up to nine. Now, how about the dog category three? Three, four dogs. Brilliant, Pat. That's excellent. Now, how many for fish shall we have? Seven. seven. Okay. Pat, can we have seven for fish? Yes. So fish up to seven. Across. And then down. And finally, the bird category. How many shall we have for birds? Five. Five. Okay. Can we have five for birds? Be careful, five, okay, and down. Excellent, okay. So now we've got our four bars for our different favorite animals. Pat, that was excellent. High five and a big round of applause for Pat, please, guys. So what we've now done is we have created our own bar chart based on favorite animals. So now let's read the information. How many people think that cat is their favorite animals? Nine. How many people think that dog is their favorite animals? Three. How many think that fish is their favorite animal? Seven. And how many think that bird is their favorite animal? Five. So what's the most popular animal, guys? Cats. How many? Yes. And which is the least favorite animal? Dog. So how many animals in total? Nine plus three, 12 plus seven, 19 plus five equals 24. So we know that our graph is about 24 animals and these are the different results. And guys, that's how we draw our own bar charts. That was brilliant, well done. And now it's time for our worksheet activity where we want our students to build on the information that they have learned and create their own bar graph according to the information in the table. So remember guys, each bar graph will need exactly the same things that you have here, but you already have your vertical and horizontal axes. What our students need to do is extract the information from the table to complete the different bars with the different information. So give our students around 12 minutes for this activity and just help them with anything they need. So bank one, this one's for you. You're welcome. Black gal for you. Plough for you. You're welcome. Down for you. You're welcome. Shoe for you. You're welcome. Nadia, here's yours. You're welcome. Pat for you. You're welcome. Pat Bung for you. You're welcome. And Ned, you're welcome. 
So names on top first, guys. And then think about our bar charts. What's the first thing that every bar chart needs? Title. The title of this bar chart is Favourite Animals. So look at the information and find out what the title of your bar chart should be. So the title, who is absent from class. So you can complete the title, who is absent. <laughs> A little bit, looks like. So first thing is your title, who is absent from class. Your vertical axis is already there, but you need your vertical axis label and your vertical axis scale. So this bar graph is about who is absent from class. Grade one, and be here. So you can just have grades. So the title of your horizontal is grades. And then you can have grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five. No, what you need to do guys is read the information to create the information is already there. You need to use the information in the table to create your own bar graphs or bar charts. The title, who is absent from class. And then you have the different grades with the different numbers of students. So for example, your horizontal, your vertical axis label will be number of students. And who's your student? So you'll need that scale. For this exercise, the information is on the worksheet. You need to draw your bar graph or bar chart to suit. So number of students. So we've got five different grades. So what's the most amount of students absent? 18. So we will need to go up to 18. So we can go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So we can go up in twos from 0 to 2, 2 to 4, because you have to have a number greater than 18 because one of the classes has 18 students missing. That's right, so the next one will be two. So this has to go up in twos, because if we do win ones, it won't be enough. Yes, excellent, Phil. Because grade three has 18 students missing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So now your horizontal axis is grade. And then we've got grade one, grade two, three, four, five. So for example, grade one has how many students absent? Grade one have how many absent? Fifteen. So grade one will go all the way to here, just below 16. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet activity where they had to use the information in the title on the table to create their own bar charts.
And as you can see my, here, my students have done an excellent job. So very well done, guys. That was brilliant. <laughs> and that's all we've got time for today. So we hope you've enjoyed the lesson and particularly the part where we had to create our own bar charts on the whiteboard exercise and also the worksheet exercise. And we'll see you again soon for the next lesson. So can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you again soon.